Good morning, Mark. How are you doing today? Arrow, I am outstanding. How are you, sir? Dude, you're using words that I live by. When you say you're outstanding, that means that's that's a daily discipline right there, sir. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. And it's uncommon, right? So people <laughs> people just start their day and they immediately, you know, get plugged into the negative uh, stuff. And part of the warrior discipline of being uncommon is to curate your your mind and your thoughts, you know, first thing, first thing in the morning. I call that winning in the mind before you step foot in the battlefield. And winning is a choice, right, Mark? Winning's a choice. Yeah, uncommon, simple principles for an extraordinary life. That The idea is to bring that that choice, um, you know, that that um, autonomy back to people, right? Mm-hmm. So, they, you know, to, people are kind of trapped in this kind of cycle of negativity and, and glued to their TV and news. And uh, and I have the saying in my community, if you're not training your mind, someone else is training it for you. Oh, and that's that's going to lead to uh, the kind of results you see in the world right now. So oh my you've got to take control of your mind and you've got to start to train it. And that requires you to do it multidimensionally, physically, mentally, emotionally, intuitionally and spiritually. And that's the reason why I will sit down and have conversations with people and say, who are you working for? Well, I'm working for me. Really? Can I see what you really? you're? Yeah, it's like, tell me exactly. more, because I, I don't think you're working for you. No, no, not at all. You're right. And, you know, I think that um, everyone's full of that fear and uncertainty right now. We call it VUCA in the SEALs. Mm. And how do you navigate VUCA? You've got to basically find the the center in the storm. And that center is inside of you. And, you know, we're also biased to look outside of us for things that we want in the world. And you're never going to find it. You're always going to be chasing the shiny ball. You're always going to be working for the man. You know, so you can find that unlimited potential by learning to turn within, but there's a, there's a distinct methodology or path that's been missing in kind of Western culture. And I learned it partly through the seals, partly through, Mm -hmm. you know, Zen meditation, which I started at 21, but there's a distinctive path and, and methodology to follow, to find that complete autonomy, which is experienced as like raw potential and creativity, intuitiveness and uh, peace of mind. And And that's what Uncommon is really about. One of the things, I call myself a silent wolf only because I stand on the sidelines and I watch. I learned that in martial arts. You learn more from the sidelines. You call yourself a warrior monk. My God, how did you grow into that name and keep it activated? Well, through training, through training, again, it's a daily commitment, you know, and you don't have to be a Navy SEAL to have the the training discipline of a Navy SEAL. It's not hard. It actually, as you know, through the martial arts, once you kind of overcome the initial resistance, it's like weightlifting then the training becomes really joyful and eventually you just you just can't do without you won't do without it it's like as important as eating and sleeping and i think that that's what i want to teach people is like with a little bit of training starting you know the moment you wake up your morning ritual and then how you approach your day right that's training and and developing this witnessing awareness that you're talking about is a game changer so that you can be much more aware and 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 take that autonomy back so you're not in a constant state of reaction and of course, you know, the reaction is always going to be negative and it's always going to be a limited or contracted response. And so to develop that capacity to to have that kind of curious engagement without getting sucked into all the dramas, <laughs> that's that's uncommon. This is the challenge that I run into with with people that are trying to make that change. They don't like the change because it, it means it, it might mean losing friends or losing something in their life. So they go back to their old habits and it's like, man, you can't do that. You got to move through that mountain. That's right. That's funny you say that. In fact, I call them the five mountains. The five sections of the book are <laughs> are the five mountains: physical yeah. mountain, mental, emotional, intuitional, and spiritual. And they they do feel like climbing a mountain initially, but again, you know, for those of us who've ever climbed a mountain, it's like it is worth the effort. You just put one foot in front of the other. I mean, you're going to put that foot somewhere, so why not put it somewhere in a positive direction that's going to lead you to higher plateaus, higher perspectives, and greater potential. And it's it, everyone has this this capacity. I don't care how busy you think you are. You're going to use your time in some way. So why not use it in a way that's going to develop you, uh, to give you control back, and to give you kind of the life that you deserve? It's it's completely possible. How did you get control of making silence sacred? Because so many people fear silence. It's because they've been trained to be distracted, mm-hmm. right? And now with the technologies that we have, right, it seems it, it seems impossible for a lot of people, but it's just training, right? If you're not training your mind, someone else is training it for you. So here's the thing. If you can take control back of your mind, 
then you will naturally find that the times in silence and sitting in contemplation and meditation and reflection are actually the most joyous times of your day. And that's where you recharge your batteries. It's where you come back to your center and it's where you can tap into that unlimited potential. I, I tell you what, all of my good ideas, Arrow, come when I'm sitting in silence and sitting yep. in quiet. I'm yep. sure yours as well, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But, you know, people aren't, they're not um, conditioned to do that. And our culture is set up to keep people distracted and overcommitted. And really, it's up to us individually to take that control back. No one's going to give it to you. Yep. yep. Right? They're just going to keep taking the book so. we're talking about is uncommon. Let me ask you a question. I do a thing called defragging, which means I ask myself the questions, then I question the answers. In reading your book, I feel like that you do the same exact thing. You ask those questions, and you go in there, and you get the answers. That's right. I, I believe that if you can ask a question, you already have the answer. <laughs> so, But it's hidden from your view yep. because you're looking for it out there. So you train yourself to be able to sit in silence and to ask the question, and then, you know, miraculously almost, it's revealed to you. I mean, this is how I led myself into the SEAL teams. I was actually a CPA working for Coopers and Library in New York City, but I was uh, fortunate enough to have found a martial arts master who was masquerading, also as a Zen ma- master. Mm-hmm. And so I started studying Zen me- meditation. You know, just sim- meditation is simply training your mind. Yes. And through the process of training my mind, I literally, it, it was revealed to me that I was meant to be a warrior. And then the SEALs were revealed to me. It's not, I wasn't like a kid these days who grew up watching SEAL Team on TV, you know? We didn't have anything back then in the 80s. Uh, SEALs were a completely secret organization. But it was sitting on that meditation bench that led me to the SEALs. And if I hadn't done that, I, we wouldn't be having this conversation today. One of the things that you put focus on is Kokoro uh, yoga. I, I'm into Nidra for my meditation, but I mean, this, the Kokoro, I mean, you give us an insight on this because it's not an American word or a Western word. Right. Kokoro, Kokoro or Kokoro, I think either either one is, is appropriate. It means to merge your heart and mind into your actions, or it could also mean whole mind. And we we in the West have like a, we we'll call a split mind. Yep. Split mind is where you're completely disconnected from that witnessing awareness, the awareness that knows that you're aware. <laughs> and so Kokoro basically is a, is a methodology of integrated development that reintegrates and heals that split mind so you experience life as whole mind and and that's what i really what i mean by uncommon it's uncommon to have whole mind but it's our birthright and so there is a path a process a developmental model now to reintegrate and to experience whole mind and whole mind the experience of whole mind is one of you know the world out there is what it is but it's it is what it is because it's a reflection of everyone's consciousness or everyone's mind playing out and it's all very negative because these minds are trained to be negative Mm -hmm. and fearful Mm -hmm. and so whole mind experiences no fear experiences no uncertainty no doubt it just it just knows the right thing to do at the right time that's where another word comes in i use often it's called shibumi Mm. effortless perfection (laughs) so whole mind you experience that effortless perfection spontaneous creativity and intuitiveness just know the right thing to do at the right time for the right reason are people afraid of their minds? And the reason why is because I love the fact that you introduce so many readers and, and people who are cha- trying to change their lives to the 20 times mind power. And, and right, right away, I'm going, how many people are going to be afraid of their own mind power? Yeah, you're right. But again, they're afraid of it because they haven't um, taken yep. the time to investigate it. Yep. Right. The unexamined mind, uh, the unexamined life is not worth living. I think Socrates said that. You know, it sounds kind of harsh, but he was trying to make a point. And how do you examine your mind? You don't do it by racing around, uh, you know, being the helicopter parent or being the perfect uh, executive or entrepreneur. Those things will happen, but you've got to take the time to, you know, slow down, sit down and to inquire, right? To look within. And that requires a specific set of practices, starting with physical health, right? You can't develop your mind if your body is unhealthy, because if your body is unhealthy, your brain is unhealthy. So, you know, that's why I start out with, um, I have five sections of the book, physical, mental, yeah. emotional, intuitional, and spiritual mountains, I call them. But it starts with the physical to get that, you know, get the body, get the structure healthy. And as that gets healthy, that begins the process of training the mind through disciplined practices, you know, just like when you wake up in the morning, one of the core practices is to win in your mind before you step foot in the battlefield. And that practice is, you know, your morning rituals, curating the quality of your thoughts, 
you know, conditioning your mind to be positive and optimistic. And, uh, and then doing that kind of work through breath work and through meditation and visualization so that you know that when you enter that day, you've already won it. Yeah. Oh, my God. Where can people go to find out more about you, Mark? Because I want them to not only read this book, but I want them to activate every single thing that you are teaching us. Oh, man, I appreciate that. Yeah, the book would lead you there. But um, uh, you can learn more about me at markdivine.com or my social media is at Real Mark Divine. And the training that I'm talking about, that the whole book is kind of based upon, we call Unbeatable Mind. Yep. And there's a website, unbeatablemind.com, that has kind of the, the entry port for that. Wow. You got to come back to this show anytime in the future. The door is always going to be open for you, Mark. <laughs> Thank you very much, sir. I really appreciate you. Have a great day. Well, you be brilliant today, all right? I will. You as well. Booyah.